This video will be a brief basic introduction to the concept of batteries as electrochemical cells. So simply defined, a battery could be defined as an electrochemical cell which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. So two different kinds of batteries that might be of interest are primary and secondary. A primary would be a one-use battery something that is not rechargeable, something whose reaction is irreversible. An example of this would be a mercury battery or a lithium battery. Note not the lithium ion battery, which is so ubiquitous in today's electronics. An example of a secondary battery would be a much more useful to us multi-use or rechargeable battery. In that kind of battery, the reaction that occurs is reversible. Standard kinds of reactions uh, of reactions that are used for secondary batteries include things like lead acid batteries, lithium ion batteries, and nickel cadmium batteries. So historically lead acid batteries were very popular and they're still the kinds of things that are uh, at, the, at the heart of most automotive batteries. Lithium ion batteries are the things which are in most small consumer electronics so things like cell phones and laptops typically have lithium ion batteries in addition to uh, modern advanced electric cars. Okay, so example of some of the chemical reactions that occur in these cases. So in a mercury battery, which is an irreversible reaction, we have solid zinc and solid mercury 2 oxide reacts to form zinc 2 oxide plus solid mercury. The Gibbs energy of this reaction is equal to the standard Gibbs energy plus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient. It's also equal to, from the Nernst equation, negative number of electrons times Faraday's constant times the EMF of the cell. So the reaction quotient here is equal to the activity of the products to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the activity of the reactants to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. In each case here, the power, the stoichiometric coefficient is 1, so all powers are to 1. So we have the activity of zinc oxide times the activity of mercury divided by the activity of zinc times the activity of mercury oxide. In all cases, these are all solids, and as long as the pressure is sufficiently close to one bar and doesn't change dramatically during the reaction, then the activity is going to remain constant for these solids and it is going to be assumed to be 1. So the reaction quotient here is 1 times 1 over 1 times 1, which means the reaction quotient is always going to equal 1, meaning that these reactants are always in their standard state, meaning the Gibbs energy of reaction is always the standard Gibbs energy of reaction, and the EMF of the cell is always the standard EMF of the cell. This particular battery happens to have a standard EMF of 1.35 volts. So if you want a very steady EMF, this battery will always produce an, a uh, potential of 1.35 volts. All right, a lead acid battery has the following reaction. We have solid lead plus solid lead 4 oxide plus sulfuric acid yields lead sulfate so I assume that's lead 2 sulfate, plus water. So it's going to discharge in, fl in flowing in the forward direction and charge going in the reverse direction. The activity quotient here is going to equal, so for the products we have H2O squared over times the activity of lead sulfate squared divided by the activity of lead times the activity of lead oxide times the activity of H2SO4 squared. Uh, note here that we have lead is solid, lead oxide is solid, lead sulfate is solid, and H2O is liquid, so the activities of all those are going to be assumed to be 1 and be constant. So here the activity quotient is just related to 1 over the concentration of sulfuric acid squared. So the only thing that can affect the uh, EMF of this cell reverting away from the standard EMF is going to be the concentration of sulfuric acid that is occurring there. So yes, the lead acid battery which is powering an automobile is typically uh, inclusive of a lot of sulfuric acid in there 
one of many reasons why you typically do not want to come into physical contact with the inner contents of batteries. So that's just a basic introduction, just to mention that batteries are electrochemical cells. There's some electrochemical reaction which occurs, which is going to discharge some chemical, which is going to discharge some electrical potential, which we can use to carry out useful work, such as propelling an automobile or powering up an electronic device.